Greetings, everybody. Father Hogan here. Good to be with you. Today we celebrate in the church the fourth Sunday of Lent. And the fourth Sunday of Lent is known as Laetare Sunday, which comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, which simply means to rejoice. Laetare means to rejoice. And so we're halfway through Lent. We're almost there. We're putting aside the focus, the shift of penance, and more so focus on rejoicing, because we rejoice at the end of our penitential season, the resurrection. And so if you haven't done so already, feel free to pause the video to grab your Bibles so you can begin. Let's begin. In all these readings, the first, the second, and the gospel have two themes, that is light and sight. And let's turn to today's first reading. Our first reading comes from the first book of Samuel, the 16th chapter. And in this book we find Jesse having seven sons, and Samuel wanting to anoint the next king. And so he observes, tests, and judges these individuals to be not the Lord's anointed, but rather there could be somebody else. And so Samuel asked Jesse if there's any more sons. And so, of course, Jesse says, of course, there's my youngest son. His name is David, and he's in the shepherding fields. And so Samuel says, we will not begin until he arrives. Well, sure enough, he comes and makes a splendid appearance. And as soon as he arrives, David is anointed. And once he's anointed, the Spirit of the Lord rushes upon him. You know, for David, he is the great precursor to the new David, that is Jesus Christ. He ushers in a new kind of kingdom, a kingdom of peace, love, mercy, and forgiveness. And David is the forerunner for all great kings that seek not to serve themselves, but the one true king. And so with that, that even though Jesse could not truly see how Christ was working in his sons, what we learn from today's first reading is very simple. Do not judge from our appearance or from his lofty stature, because the Lord has rejected. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. What a great spiritual reminder that if God looks at us with mercy and kindness, we too also look at others in mercy and kindness. We try not to judge because we don't really know what people are going through. Think of each of each and every one of us as an iceberg that we really only see 20%. The other 80% is underwater. And so if that's the case, then we simply try to take people at face value and to love them as they are. For that is what Christ and what a Christian is supposed to do. So let's turn to today's second reading. The second reading comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In this, St. Paul is encouraging us to get out of darkness, to put on the armor of light, so we can be a great example for those in need. Have you ever been to Maine or the East Coast? We see these massive uh, lighthouses. And the lighthouses are necessary because in times of darkness or storms, ships coming to harbor need to see a light to arrive. That is what we are as Christians. We are the light of the earth and salt of the world. And so, have you ever wondered why halos are placed upon saints? It's not for the saints' benefit, but it's for all of us. As we read, we ask their intercession, they help us to remove the blindness from our own eyes, so we can see as Christ sees. That is, each and every one of us is a beloved daughter and son of the Father. And so let us now turn to today's Gospel, the Gospel of John. And John's Gospel is taken from the ninth chapter. We see a very powerful story of Jesus healing a blind man. For Christianity, believe it or not, is a way of seeing the world, seeing it in a qualitatively different kind of way. As the story unfolds, Jesus notices that this man has been blind from birth. That's very important. Many times if a person's been blind, it's because of sinfulness. But obviously, if he was blind from birth, it didn't really have to do with sinfulness. So blindness, I would say, the blindness that we see in the scriptures certainly could be a physical blindness, but really it's a spiritual blindness that we can't see God. So God wants to remove the blindness from our eyes. So literally, he takes the dirt and saliva and puts it literally into the man's eyes. And then he asks the man to wash in the pool of Shalom. And certainly this man had been blind, and now he sees. And the great miracle has taken place. The crowds are just truly amazed worship God. And of course, 
the Pharisees are the ones to question, and they ridicule the man. And so the man, in utter simplicity, responds by saying, At one point I couldn't see, but now I see. And that's the great gift that God gives to us. If we encounter Jesus Christ, he helps to remove the blindness from our eyes so that we can see his powerful effects in our lives so we can be a great, powerful example to those in our family and friends' lives as well. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all goodness and mercy and kindness, we thank you for encountering us, wanting to heal us by your great sacraments of the church. Help us to remove the blindness from our eyes through sinfulness and restore us as your beloved sons and daughters. We ask with your grace, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. May God bless each and every one of you on Laetare Sunday to rejoice always. God bless.